The drugs for osteoporosis leave a lot to be desired. There's no long-term approach, anything past 10 years. And if you're in your 30s, 40s, or 50s, maybe 60s, maybe even 70s or 80s, you might be looking at more than a 10-year time horizon. The challenge here is that osteoporosis is a metabolic dysfunction of bone. To improve the metabolism of bone, we need to do more than just take a drug. But with the drugs, there are side effects that people are very concerned about, and they're always looking for alternative options. So I went to a conference a couple of weeks ago, and this was not actually about osteoporosis, but I was happy to see that there was an option for osteoporosis that I had not seen before. Now, this is an older FDA-approved treatment that I want to get into today, not because I think that this drug is actually a good choice, but because there are similar alternatives that I think we should consider, not only for bone health, but also for muscle health and also for health span. So like I said, I was at a conference a, a couple of weeks ago called the Silverback Summit. Now this summit is really more about bodybuilding, it's about muscle mass, it's about men's health more so than osteoporosis and bone health. But remember that muscle health and bone health are intrinsically tied together. So I shouldn't have been surprised to find that actually some of the things we were talking about could be related to bone health. So there was a drug that was mentioned as an anabolic steroid for people that are actually abusing drugs uh, to watch out for. But what I, I realized is that we were talking about this drug called nandrolone, which is an anabolic steroid, and it actually is FDA approved for osteoporosis. And I had my team go back and look at studies on, on uh, nandrolone to see how impactful it is for osteoporosis. And they actually pulled 17 different studies showing that it increased bone mineral density, it increased muscle mass, it did cause some weight gain, uh, which could be good for some, but not necessarily good for all. Um, but there were some negatives. And so like all anabolic steroids, there are concerns about the side effects of facial hair, particularly obviously in women, uh, more so than in men, but also acne and even voice changes, which can happen with anabolic steroids. And so the rate of side effects was pretty high, up to 50% in some studies. And so while there was an increased bone mineral density in um, all the patients that were taking the appropriate dose of nandrolone, um, none of the studies were long enough to show a reduction in fracture risk, but you could probably assume that that would happen over time. Um, but the side effect profile was so high that this was really only being used in older individuals as an alternative to some of the other drugs because they probably couldn't tolerate them. Now, nandrolone is not commercially available at this time. It has kind of fallen out of favor if it ever really was in favor. But there's a similar alternative that I want to talk about that I think is overlooked in the space of bone health and kind of in muscle health, not necessarily in all populations, but certainly in my population. Before we get into this alternative to nandrolone, I want to ask you one favor. If you could just click that subscribe button to help me to help other people. The more people that subscribe, the more this channel is presented to those that are looking for solutions to their bone health journey. If you're looking for a way to put all of this information together, because I know now we have a lot of videos on here, uh, consider coming to our free masterclass. The masterclass is where we compile all this information into one place. You can come to the masterclass, listen to how we put it together, and then there's an opportunity for question and answer. The link for that's in the description below. Okay, so what is this cool alternative to nandrolone or anabolic steroids? Well, what I wanna talk about now is testosterone. Now, I've done a couple of videos on testosterone, and I wanna reiterate that testosterone is not FDA approved for osteoporosis. However, if we look at studies in men, there is improvement in testosterone studies in multiple randomized control trials that show improved bone mineral density. And again, these studies weren't done long enough to show a decrease in fracture risk, but significant increase in bone mineral density, increased muscle mass, as you might expect, but some things that you may not expect, and that would include improved quality of life, increased insulin sensitivity. So that's really important when it comes to metabolic function, for people that have prediabetes, diabetes, or any metabolic dysfunction, which is actually about 90% of our adult population in the United States. Testosterone was also shown to improve mood, improve cognitive function, decrease adiposity or the amount of body fat that you have, and decrease depressive and anxiety symptoms. So testosterone is not just about muscle mass. It's not just about BMD. 
for me, testosterone is actually a much bigger picture. And in men, we know that many of the symptoms of aging are associated with a reduction in testosterone. And for those that need it, testosterone replacement can help with a lot of those symptoms. However, in women, it's a little different. So in women, the FDA has only approved testosterone for this thing called HSDD, which stands for hypoactive sexual desire disorder. So this is a psychiatric disorder. And doctors don't really talk about this very much. And they don't recommend testosterone for women very often, because it's unlikely that they are going to be in the situation where they're talking about this one thing. And then they're going to recommend this one treatment. A lot of times this is wrapped into a bigger picture. But even if they did want to recommend treatment of testosterone for women with HSDD, if they actually have that diagnosis, there is no commercial product for women that's available right now in the United States and in most countries, actually. And so you have to then go down the compounding pathway, which is uncomfortable for a lot of doctors. Now, that's how we do it. Uh, and I think it's safe and it's reasonable to do that. But a lot of doctors don't want to do that because there's concerns about compounding pharmacies and then, you know, testosterone is a controlled substance. It's on the same level of narcotics and Oxycontin. And so there's just a concern around prescribing these things for both men and women, but definitely for women, especially if it's not for an FDA approved indication, because most doctors don't know what the symptoms of HSDD are, and they're not going to actually diagnose it. Um, and so women kind of get left out in the cold. But when you look at research on testosterone in women, because there is some, you do see some improvements in bone mineral density. This has been studied. Um, you do see improvements in all the sexual dysfunction stuff. That's why it's recommended for HSDD. But in, if you look at the studies in men, you can imagine that if testosterone was a natural sex hormone in women and loss of testosterone happened as women age as they go through menopause, which it does, although not for all women, uh, but it does frequently, then you could assume that some of those things would likely be true in women as it is in men. But what's happened in the research space around testosterone for women is that the research in men really focuses on symptoms of aging, low testosterone, symptoms of low testosterone, and they are really one. And even sexual function in men is a part of aging. And we talk about uh, loss of libido and loss of erectile function as symptoms of aging. And those are things that we want to treat to improve a man's health span. But yet in women, we consider sexual dysfunction or hypoactive sexual desire disorder a psychiatric condition. And all of those things that we talk about in men, we don't talk about those in women. In women, it's a psychiatric condition and you have loss of estrogen causing the symptoms of menopause that most people think about night sweats and hot flashes. But yet women and men go through a lot of the same symptoms of aging, which would include loss of interest, loss of muscle mass, increased adiposity, decreased cognitive function, just to name a few. And I think there's a big thing that's missing here that I want to point out. And I've, I've pointed this out before, but let me just show you these two figures. So I'll pull this first one up. So this is a figure looking at sex hormones in women. So when you look at sex hormones in women, this figure shows testosterone and estrogen. And you can assume since estrogen is the dominant sex hormone in women, or at least that's what we generally think, that this top line of this, the black line with the black dots, is going to be estrogen. And that the bottom line, the white dots in the black line, is going to be testosterone. And if you have so much more estrogen than testosterone, then maybe we should just focus on the estrogen because that's the primary sex hormone. In fact, you could argue this is the same thing that's true in men. Men have a fair amount of testosterone. They do not have that much estrogen. Therefore, we should focus on the testosterone in men. Now, in men, that makes sense because testosterone is converted into estrogen, and that's how men get their estrogen. So actually, you can just treat that one, and you're going to get the other. However, in women, if we just treat with estradiol or estrogen, you might get a little bit of conversion of testosterone, but it doesn't go backwards very well. It actually goes from testosterone to estrogen. So then let's look at this second figure. And I want to point out something here that is critically important. And one of the biggest things that you can get as a takeaway from this video, which is that black line with the black dots, the one that's higher than the one with the white dots, that is the level of testosterone in women compared to the level of estradiol in women. Testosterone is the higher line. Testosterone is the dominant sex hormone in women. It always has been and it always will be. Women have around five times more testosterone when controlled for units than they do estradiol or estrogen throughout their entire life. 
So why is it that we think of symptoms of aging and loss of testosterone in men and how they're intrinsically connected, but yet in women, we don't. In women, we think of sexual dysfunction as a psychiatric disorder, estrogen loss causing these vasomotor symptoms, but all the other stuff that goes along with aging and menopause is not associated with their dominant sex hormone. It doesn't make any sense. And yet when we look at studies on men, we can see all these improvements, but these studies have not been done and women. And you can continually look at recommendations of not using testosterone in women because there's no clearly identified syndrome, because we've not tied all of these things to testosterone. And people are so afraid of the potential side effects or the potential risks. So I already mentioned the side effects of nandrolone. And so you might be asking yourself, hey, are those the same side effects in testosterone? Am I going to grow facial hair? Am I going to get acne? Am I going to go bald? And for the vast majority of women, when you're using exogenous testosterone, which comes in the form of a cream, there is the potential for side effects, particularly in women that use pellets. So uh, it's very popular in some anti-aging circles to use uh, pellets for women. And pellets will give you a very high dose of testosterone typically. And yeah, you can see some side effects. And the downside of pellets is that you can't get them out. And so you're on a ride for two to three months of all of these potential side effects. We like to use a cream and we like to then mix uh, that cream with another cream of estradiol. So we're getting both. When you do it that way, you can control the dose very clearly. And if somebody does start to see side effects, because there is some unique variation in how much you're converting testosterone to this thing called DHT or dihydrotestosterone uh, in the skin and in the scalp, it is possible to see side effects, but you can always then reduce the testosterone dose, or you could potentially change and use something that will block the testosterone to DHT conversion. Uh, there are both supplemental forms of that and drug forms of those things. So the side effects are controllable if it happens to be coming from the, the way that you're applying it. The next question then is, does testosterone give you the same benefit as nandrolone? And the answer is there's no study that compares the two. They are both anabolic steroids by definition. Nandrolone is a little bit stronger and we do see the benefits of testosterone treatment in men, but not in women. So if you're a man listening to this, or if you know a man that has osteoporosis, making sure that their testosterone is optimized is critical. Um, if you're a woman listening to this and nobody's talked to you about testosterone, then maybe it's time to actually have that discussion. Because again, we can see that there's so much benefit of testosterone in men, and I think there's probably more benefit in women, we just don't have the studies to prove it. So what do we do? Well, I think we should definitely consider optimizing hormones in both men and women. There is a risk to taking hormones. I never want anybody to think that there's not a risk because there's a risk to anything. There's a risk of death with calcium supplementation. There's a risk of death with drinking too much water. The side effects and the potential risks of hormones are real, but when you understand the true risks and the true benefits, it makes it easier to have that conversation. So with men, we recommend testosterone if it needs to be optimized or replaced because there's such tremendous impact on health span, on symptoms of aging, and on bone health and muscle health. For women, we start with estradiol if it's appropriate. We balance that with progesterone. And then we also recommend testosterone because testosterone has similar impact on women as we do in men that's what we see in our practice and even though it's an off-label indication we are able to do that and there are plenty of ways that this can be done my recommendation for my patients is that we test we use biomarkers we use physiologic not super physiologic doses and that way we can avoid a lot of the side effects and potentially some of the risks so like I mentioned before, in our practice, we're using a topical estradiol, whether it be through a patch or a cream. We're using an oral micronized progesterone, which can avoid the risks of the synthetic progestins, which are so commonly prescribed. And then we're using a topical testosterone for those that are open to it. And we're using it again at physiologic doses to help avoid the potential androgenic side effects for women. When you wrap all of that together, you can see some tremendous impact in the symptoms of aging, in health span overall, and then in muscle mass and ultimately in bone health. So I hope all that makes sense. Um, not recommending to use this nandrolone old uh, drug because of the potential androgenic side effects, but there is potentially an alternative to consider. So that's it, everybody. Thanks for making it to the end of this video. I encourage everyone to aim for optimal, not average. And do not be afraid to be extraordinary because that's what it takes. If you need help doing that, I would consider 
for you to join our HealthSpan Nation. HealthSpan Nation is an area where we bring together all the people interested in improving their health into a community where you have the opportunity to speak with myself or a team member, either through a, a QA, and a a topic-driven uh, format, or potentially through an interview with the opportunity to then ask questions to the person that I'm interviewing. We have a fantastic list of people that we're bringing into the HealthSpan Nation. This is also where we house all of our uh, affiliate um uh, opportunities for people to save money on products and services that we vetted. We also have then the community room that you can enter into and ask other people that are pursuing these same things, uh, questions about their own journey and their own experience. And then starting in Q1 2024, depending on when you're watching this video, we're going to start uh, producing uh, content for the uh, informational vault the educational content that's going to go within this HealthSpan Nation as well. So head on over to drdouglucas.com and you get all the information you need to there. I'll see you there.